Well, hello and welcome to all of our viewers from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Today, I'm so happy to be telling you about our upcoming event here. You can join us on goldlearning.com right now to explore what's coming up here, but we will be celebrating World Prematurity Day with our very special guest here today, Dr. Marsha Campbell Yo, who is going to be joining us just in a minute talking about this particular event. Now, we're going to have it on November 15th for most of you. So please go to the website. You'll be able to register for free. So this is free content for you. How exciting is that? Um, and you'll be able to go in, register, and then it will tell you what time it is in your local time zone. So that's really important because it's going to be different for all of us. The presentation is titled Advancing the Landscape of Neonatal Pain Management and Dr. Campbell Yo is going to be talking uh, in depth about all those things. But I'm so excited, honestly, to have you back, Marsha. Thank you for joining us again here at Gold Learning. Oh, thank you so much, Fiona, for your invitation. Uh, I always love opportunities to share uh, information about how to improve pain care across the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you're just doing so many great things. I know um, some of the things that you've done, and I know you're going to be getting some awards soon, but you have traveled around the world, essentially, you know, really advocating for different aspects of neonatal care, NICU units, and all those types of things. So why don't you just start us off with what you've been doing since we last saw you and some of the exciting things that you get to explore soon? Well, Fiona, it's been a while since uh, we've been here. So, of course, the pandemic. Uh, so uh, living through the pandemic and really the focus uh, more recently is trying to sort of recover from families not being in the neonatal intensive care unit and trying to reinstate them as such active participants in their baby's pain care mm. has really been such a huge focus of our work uh, looking at national guidelines to ensure that families are not restricted from neonatal intensive care units and uh, really um, re-educating and uh, and spreading the word about uh, how much parents make a difference. And of course, we've been actively engaged in increasing the scientific evidence to really support that with Cochrane reviews and uh, other randomized control trials, really emphasizing the importance of parents in pain care. I just love hearing about those things because it it reminds me, you know, you know how sometimes when you're in practice and you really feel like you're weighed down because nothing's really changing and or maybe it's just the department you're in or maybe it's the people you're working with, but there really is change. So how does a person, do you think a clinician who's in that that sort of area and they feel like nothing around them is changing? What does that person do to because they they have the tenacity, they really do want to put something in place. Where would they begin, Marsha? Well, you know, Fiona, I think we feel that way, as you say, you know, you go and you work and you see some of the evidence not being put into practice. But, you know, it really only takes one person, it mm. takes one person to really um accept the challenge of making sure that mothers and babies and parents um, really have optimal care in. And so it's them role modeling, doing new things. And for us, and what you're going to hear about in our in my talk on the 15th, is really how um, not only are we reinstating and re-engaging families in care uh, during routine blood collections and intramuscular injections, which we've heard of in the past, we're really pushing the boundaries of using families as analgesia and pain care for other types of procedures that a lot of people haven't really done and uh, we're really excited to share. And, and that's just really been some amazing champions within our uh, neonatal intensive care unit that said, hey, we're just going to do it. And what we've heard from families uh, just is so amazing that 
all health care professionals, like that's what makes you change is when you just see what your good work is doing mm. to families, experiences and babies, long term outcomes. Yeah, that's so important. I think, yeah, it's a, it's a generation of where we have parents who are asking to make those changes. They're the at the forefront, you know, having more information, um, talking about it, asking. And of course, they're, you know, they are, I mean, they're going through a grief period as well. But I see that I see them, you know, stepping up to the plate and asking the questions. Things really have changed. There's no doubt about it. You know, we're definitely, you know, engaging our families more. Tell me a little bit about your actual physical situation. You're in Canada and practice within Canada. However, I feel like you have such this great opportunity. I know you travel, you speak at other events. Of course, this is an international event here at Gold Learning. But tell me about how you have seen things change over the last few years in terms of being able to reach outside of your own network nationally, internationally. How has that impacted the changes that you've seen um, in practice as well? Uh, so I think what happens is if you when you build really strong networks uh, across multiple groups, um, it's then it's just adding to so many more people who are working towards making a difference. Um, and with that, we've been able to create national guidelines we've been able to create and work within uh, an international voice around advocacy uh, and not just with healthcare providers and scientists and researchers with multi-centered trials but with families and mm. some of my most exciting uh things that I've been doing is really building strong networks with parent organizations. So the ah. Canadian Premature Baby Foundation has just been so instrumental in not just reaching healthcare providers, but reaching families to mm. help to understand the best way for us to give them education, right. how to reach them, how they can help us reach others. And then along with that, also moving towards international groups like the EFCNI, which is a large group, parent group uh, in Europe who have over 77 countries have created standards in how to ensure optimal pain care, um, so that the parent voice, uh, not only have, um, at the table to ensure that they receive the education that they do, that they need, but also that their voice and their experiences really guide what we do as, um, care providers, researchers, and, uh, you know, administrators and policymakers. Oh, I really enjoy that. I think that it reminds me of the fact that we really don't need to be siloed in our organizations, in our efforts, that this is really all about collaborative care at its root, right? Right in the, right in the NICUs, but beyond that as well, like you're saying, if, if we're all on the same page, it just makes things so much easier. So the messaging is consistent and the understanding and knowledge spreads that much faster. So that is, that's really interesting to hear that you've been able to work with these parenting associations as well. Sometimes I feel like there's been a real separation, um, you know, in those associations. Now it sounds like we're coming together and learning from each other. Well, and not just learning from each other, working together side by Love side. That. So all of our research projects, uh, studies now all have parents who are equal members of our research teams. Their voice helps us with the conception, the design, the understanding, dissemination. Uh, and, you know, that's just such essential to mm. ensure that your research is grounded in not just in focusing on filling gaps in our science, right. but actually in what parents value most mm. and the questions that they want to have answered. Um, and, you know, I just will mention one other thing that's really exciting for me is I'm the incoming president of the pain and childhood special interest group for the international study for um, pain 
And I'm really excited that I'm hoping in this position that we'll even have another advocacy body to ensure that we reach a global impact for our messaging and uh, in sort of other other ways in which this group can help us with advocacy and change, practice uptake. Well, I, I feel like you heard it here first. If anyone's listening in right now, you know what you're supposed to do. I feel like a lot of people listen in and they're not sure where to begin or how to start or how to connect. Um, not every country or every unit is doing all of these things. So here is the opportunity. Here is you're a great example to your community locally and internationally. And now as part of the, you know, pre coming incoming president of the Pain Association, um, I know that you're just reaching and taking things to a whole new level. So we can sit back. I feel like we're going to sit back. We're going to learn from you. We're going to hear what, you know, what we can do next and how we can, you know, locally, wherever we are in the world, we can really come together and, and do more for our communities. So that sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Marsha. Oh, thank you, Fiona. Well, thank you again, uh, everyone listening into here. I did mention that you can go straight to goldlearning.com right now and register for this presentation. This is gonna be so important as we celebrate the World Prematurity Day together. We will be coming together on November 15th. For most of us, make sure you can uh, check in on your local time zone, come and listen live. It will give you an opportunity to come together um, with your colleagues, perhaps meet people from around the world, find out the different aspects of what's happening either locally or internationally, um, you know, in respect to all the things that you're working on when it comes to pain management, it comes to your policy making and your advocacy uh, within your units. It's going to be such an amazing opportunity. Now, if you happen to be busy that day or you already know you're working, take advantage, register now and you will be, have access to the recording and we will still have a live forum where you can ask questions, of course, of each other. And Marsha will be here as well. So thank you once again uh, to Dr. Marsha Campbell-Yo for being with us here today. Thank you, Marsha. It was just wonderful meeting with you again here. Thank you, Fiona. And again, thank you to all of you that tuned in. If you have any questions, pop them in the uh, below in the comments section. And we'll look forward to seeing you online. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye for now.